Hi! In this lesson, we are going to explore what makes a game good or fun for the player. Before we begin, however, it's important to be aware of two very personal matters. The first, what may be a game for one is not a game for another. For example, let's take raking up leaves. I could see it as a game to collect all the leaves in the shortest amount of time, whereas you could just see it as a chore. Or two, what may be a good game or fun game for one is not for another. For example, I may find a word game fun, but you find it boring. We could spend a whole year diving into these questions of what is a game and what makes a game fun. There are a lot of different thoughts in these topics. In reality, anything could probably be a fun game for somebody. In this lesson, though, we are going to focus on a few common themes that make games fun, regardless of what the actual game is. A first important element that must be present in all games is some sort of challenge or goal for the player to overcome or achieve. This provides the player a sense of purpose. They are on a mission to do something. These challenges may be explicit part of the game, like getting to the end of a level, or solving a puzzle, or winning a race, or not dying, or something that the user creates, like completing a level in the shortest time, or creating an organized farm, or building a really tall tower. Either way, the challenges give the player something to focus on and work toward, keeping their interest. For example, chess is famous for how challenging it is, and some people devote their lives trying to master it, whereas a game like tic-tac-toe is missing the requisite challenge that sustains interest. But not all challenging things are necessarily games or that fun. So what's the difference between taking a multiple choice test and enjoying a game? The element of choice. Meaningful choices make challenges interesting. So all games must provide the player with opportunities to make meaningful choices that impact their outcomes. For example, when playing a farming game, at one point you may need to choose whether you want to harvest crops or plant more seeds. This choice then opens up different pathways to move through the game. Or, in the game Super Smash Brothers, you have to make a quick choice between going for an item, the opponent, or seeking a higher position. In fact, a very successful Canadian programmer and game designer, Sid Meier, once said, a game is a series of interesting decisions. If there are no choices for the player to make, they become a passive observer, like watching an animated movie. The key, though, is that the choices have to be meaningful. In other words, do the choices matter? Do they affect the outcome of the game? Are they informed decisions? Do players have enough information to at least guess how their decision may affect them? Otherwise, if the choices don't matter, or if they are just random picks with no information, the player disengages and stops trying. It's no longer fun. A third element in a game that must be present is the element of change. All games must change over the course of play. If they don't, the player gets bored very quickly. Imagine if the original Mario was just the same level over and over again. Fun for the first time or two, but people wouldn't play much longer than that. Or what if a car driving game was just one car on a straight road the entire time? Not terribly fun. Whether it's changing the car type or color, the path of the road, or the scenery, there are a lot of options to provide that variety that will keep the player engaged and wanting to continue playing. The types of changes you bring into your games will depend on the type of game and how you want to tailor the player's ex experience. Whether it's having multiple levels for the player to go through, or gaining new items or abilities, or new areas of the landscape for the player to discover, it doesn't matter what the change looks like, but they all serve in keeping the player interested. A final element we'll examine here is that all games must have defined rules and procedures. These specify the actions that can or cannot be taken, and when and where they can be taken. They define the game world in which the players are voluntarily existing in. Players must adhere to these rules in order to play. If they don't, they are leaving the game. Having rules is one of the elements that separates general play and playing a game. Imagine throwing a ball back and forth with a friend. 
The ball is a toy, and throwing it back and forth is fun play, but not necessarily a game yet. As soon as you add a couple of rules, like you can only throw and catch with one hand, and the ball can't hit the ground, and a challenge, like trying to get as many throws in a row as possible, you now have a fun and interesting game. As you go through this lesson, you'll get the chance to reflect on these elements in games that you have already played, then apply what you've learned to the development of your first game.